A very good morning, Riga. Konnichiwa, Nihon. Hajime mashite. Irono Gurchaku des. Kyo no hosto des. Commercialization reactor de fanda manager o shitemas. Dozo iroshko negaishimas. Welcome to Next Level Deep Talk. This is the event organized by Plug and Play Japan and Commercialization Reactor. Uh, and I will be your host today. The reason we organize this event is that both of the organizations, we want to see more cooperation between the industry and startups. We want this cooperation to grow in intensity and quality. A couple of words about deep tax in both countries. When the notable characteristic of Japan is that corporations, industrial corporations, invest more into startups than VCs. And actually, corporations also back VC funds and sponsor them. And this is why they are seeking for new technologies that they cannot develop in-house. They are seeking for frontier technologies uh, in the startups that are spin out from Japanese universities. And investments into deep tech in Japan are growing. In Latvia, it's a similar story. Actually, uh, more than 13% of startups since 2012 uh, are in deep tech in Latvia. And Latvia has been focusing on several areas of uh, specialization. And you know them, it's photonics, uh, these are new materials, these are biotechnologies, bioeconomics and smart energy. And uh, Latvian startups are forced to actually go global because uh, the market here is tiny and they, from their birth, need to cooperate with global corporations. And hence this session is organized so that startups both from Japan and Latvia can find their industrial partners and can find their global partnerships and can cooperate at the next level. Then there is a next level deep tech. So, I will be uh, presenting a bit uh, the agenda of today. Uh, we are having first uh, the presentation about uh, commercialization reactor, a very short one. Then there will be uh, an introduction from Plug and Play Japan. Then we will have uh, our partner from INAM, uh, Dr. Ferdinand Bartels, uh, speaking about the INAM organization. Uh, and uh, then we, it will be followed by four pitches of Latvian startups. You in the audience, and uh, we have an audience in the Zoom session, uh, people from Japan and all over the world actually joining this session here today. Uh, everyone will be able to ask questions. Uh, and then we will turn to Japanese part. Uh, we will have a presentation from Asahi Kasei and it will be followed by the presentations from Japanese startups. Again, there will be a, an option to ask questions. So uh, there will be a QR code, you see it on the screen right now, and it's also in the Zoom. Uh, and uh, you can just scan it and post, post your questions, uh, which we will ask to the startups. So, I will start with the presentation about the commercialization reactor. So, we are science commercialization platform. We have been uh, creating, supporting and developing startups uh, since 2008. And uh, we have been doing so by applying our unique method of bringing together brilliant scientific minds and brilliant entrepreneurs. And we were facilitating of them building perfect teams and helping them to step on their business road to create deep tech business startups. Over the course of these years, uh, we have created more than 140 teams. <clears throat> and uh, uh, there are more than 50 startups uh, that are invested and are on the market with different stages of their development. And uh, they continue uh, raising funds, they continue growing uh, in their client base and then their industrial base, and we are there to support them. The startups are coming from uh, the number of areas. <clears throat> They can come from the energy sector, they can find their application in the chemical industry, in food sector, in construction, in space. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we will continue this uh, journey with them and we will uh, 
start the new uh, partnerships in order to facilitate the creation of new startups. So, how we add value to startups? So we start very, very early, even when there is no a team. Uh, we start separately with scientists, we prepare them, we start separately with entrepreneurs, we also prepare them because they do have different mindsets and they need to be able to meet each other and they need to understand each other. So we are there with our mentoring guidance, with our technological expertise through the creation stage, we are there through the acceleration stage, we help with mentorship, we also provide funding from a commercialization reactor fund, and of course we uh, do a lot to facilitate uh, cooperation with the industry. And this session is one of the examples that we want to actually provide to our startups uh, that are our residents. Well, this is uh, a very short intro about the commercialization reactor, and this is an honor for me to also to pass a virtual mic to our partners in Japan, to Hayata Okubo, who is responsible for acceleration program in Plug and Play Japan, and specifically responsible for bringing together startups uh, with the industry. So, Hayata, konnichiwa, the floor is yours. Konnichiwa. Thank you so much for the amazing presentation introduction, Ilona. So hello everybody uh, from Japan. Uh, my name is Hayata. I'm a senior program manager for New Materials. So I'm one of the organizers for this session. So first of all, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. And it's our pleasure to have a number of participants and speakers from different parts of the world. And also today's main sessions are a startup pitch and keynote speech. Before we start that, please let us briefly explain about who we are for those who don't know about plug and play. So Plug and Play is the world's biggest innovation platform to connect startups with many different ecosystem players. And our key business domains are acceleration program and corporate innovation and venture capital. So I'm not gonna go deep into each business today, but if you're interested, we are happy to have a chat after this event. So explaining about uh, Plug and Play, uh, sorry, can I go back to the uh, previous slide? Yeah. Explaining about us with numbers. So if uh, we have 18 plus themed uh, programs and 50 plus locations, and uh, we have uh, 3,000, uh, 30,000 startups uh, on our platform and more than 500 employees and corporate partners all over the world and 31 unicorns. So as you can see, we are very international and rapidly growing innovation platform. Next slide, please. The Plug and Pay Japan was founded in 2017, and we are the biggest office in Asia. And we run eight themed programs, as you can see here. And for the past five years, we have accelerated more than uh, 800 startups with 43 corporate partners, uh, including Asahi Kasei, uh, who is today's presenter. Um, yeah, thanks to all the stakeholders, we are steadily expanding our uh, community uh, globally. And speaking of deep tech, uh, more than half of Japanese unicorn startups are in deep tech, and more than 40% uh, of plug and play portfolios are deep tech startups. So we believe uh, deep tech is one of the most important elements to strengthen our like global competitiveness of Japanese economy for the next few decades. So through this event, we are hoping to help Japanese startups to go global and also overseas startups to enter into Japanese market. Yeah, if you're interested in talking with us, uh, please contact us after this event. Yep, that's it for greeting from Japan. And again, thank you so much for your participation today. So now I'll hand it back to Ilona. Thank you, Hayata. Arigato. And it is an honor for me to present the next uh, presenter. This is uh, the representative from our partner, which is INAM. Uh, INAM is Berlin-based uh, global active organization founded by industry leaders, research institutes, investors, and public offices to accelerate deep tech startups and to help complex innovations reach their target audience. And I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Ferdinand Rudolf Bartels, who is experienced managing director with a demonstrated history of working in the nanotechnology industry. Uh, he's strong business development professional, skilled in international growth, mergers and acquisitions, product development, strategic planning, and cross-functional team leadership. 
Dr. Ferdinand Bartels. The floor is yours. Hello, good morning to Riga, to Latvia, good afternoon to Japan. Uh, I'm very happy and proud to present uh, the activities of ENAM to this audience. Uh, and let me um, share my screen. Uh, uh, here we go. Is the screen visible now? Is that okay? <clears throat> yes, thank you. Okay, good, thank you. So uh, a brief introduction of uh, what ENAM is doing. ENAM stands for Innovation Network for Advanced Materials. Um, so it's the name is a program almost. Uh, we are dealing with innovations in the field of advanced materials and the organization is founded by industry leaders in Europe, Germany, Europe, and but now also from uh, quite the world. We have members from Japan as well, of course. Um, and uh, we are based in Berlin. So greetings from Berlin to Riga. Berlin is one of the contestants as being one of the deep tech startup hubs <laughs> next to Riga. Um, let me let me take uh, take us through this uh, journey by starting with uh, what is actually the typical reason for startups to fail uh, and sometimes uh, analyzing the reasons for failing is a, a good model for understanding what uh, companies can do better you see here a list of uh, what has been come up uh, our team has been come up with the most uh, reasons for companies to fail a lot of them are dealing with uh, the business model isn't good enough uh, or technically the product isn't ready for the market or even it gets outcompeted. Uh, but I like to put your attention to the to uh, bottom three items here. Not the right team, 23%, ran out of cash, 29%, no market need uh, with uh, almost 30% on it. Uh, so this is something where we, which we address from the ENAM team at the, in the first go. Is it the right team? What are the financial needs? Do the expectations meet the reality? Uh, is there a good business plan in place that uh, addresses the financial needs? Because at the very end, acceleration of any innovative ideas depends on money very often. Uh, what is our mission? Uh, ENAM is a membership organization uh, with the mission to support innovative ideas, uh, products and processes in the area of advanced materials and adjacent innovation areas. So that means we're not only dealing with materials that you can physically, physically touch, we also deal with all the software that is around uh, with uh, AI uh, innovations, uh, some service, uh, but most of the work we're doing is in areas of deep tech, science-based, physical innovations. Uh, we foster collaboration between innovators, startups, corporates, uh, research institutions, and investors. So this is a lineup, uh, which is probably a little bit typical. And here are a bit of the numbers. We have 22 industry members, uh, which I share with you in a second. Uh, currently, we have uh, 77 startup members. These are the startups which are currently going through the various programs Enum is offering. Uh, in our ecosystem, or <laughs> old-fashioned, I would say, in our database, uh, are about 2,000 startups. Uh, and the team of Enam uh, uh, consists of uh, six team members and a lot of volunteers. I myself are head of the board of Enam. And uh, so I'm in a way, uh, one of the many, many volunteers that helps to support, uh, um, su to support the network. Um, a little look on the members here, you find a lot of the famous names on it uh, from the German industry like Bosch uh, or Continental. Uh, you find also companies which are originated from Japan like Sony or JX Nippon uh, and so on and so on. Uh, it's a significant group of industry partners that support us uh, in every aspect uh, and of course they are also leading in many ways investments in in our startup uh, startups that are coming through this program 
We have a lot of partners uh, and supporters. I'm not going through that in, in any details. Commercialization Reactor is one of the very strong and, 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 and very good partners of Enum. Or Enum is a very good partner of commercial, Commercialization Reactor for many years. And we are enjoying the collaboration quite a bit. Uh, what does it take to be successful uh, for a startup? It takes a technology and IP base, which has to be rock solid, uh, proven and, and, and safe. Uh, of course, this is something we check a lot. Uh, it, it takes a team. It takes a well-rounded team. It takes an entrepreneurial spirit and uh, it takes a willingness to learn. So uh, teams have to accept mentoring. They have to accept that people are in the field that have more experience and they need to um, accept advice, if I might say. And, 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 and trust me, and for the many years I'm doing this, uh, there's a significant portion of companies who are slower and less successful than they could be simply because they haven't put enough attention into the team issues of their uh, of their startup. Well, it needs a market. Uh, this is where our companies, our partners come into play a lot. Uh, whether the product has a market, whether this is a strategic fit to the market is something we are uh, checking a lot with, uh, with our industry partners who definitely have the insights in it. And it needs uh, investors that are investing in it. If it's not our partners that are investing, then we need public investors where we have a great uh, number of uh, contacts into uh, uh, let's say friendly investors who are joining and working with Enum since since many many years uh, what is our program that we have we are sorry I'm back here uh, the supporting program is we are supporting startups from the cradle to greatness uh, I would say from Technology level about three, so when it's just about uh, coming out of the laboratory, all the way to technology level nine, with various uh, programs, uh, all coming under the brand name Advanced Materials. We have the Advanced Materials Lab, where companies basically spending one year in a in, uh, university environment, still in a laboratory environment, and we are financing that. We have the Advanced Materials Competition kind of the workhorse for the companies that are looking for seed investments. Uh, and we have um, advanced material, advanced scale materials competition for companies that are looking for series A investments and are at a later stage. Uh, since 2016, uh, we had in our programs uh, more than 80 startups from over 20 countries. Uh, we spent significant amount of hours mentoring, uh, a lot of workshops uh, and demo days. Uh, in order to get into one of the ENAM programs, it's a stiff competition. We have around 150 to 200 applicants for, a, for each Atmacom round, and we typically select 10 to 12 for, for, the, uh, for the workshops. So there is a bit of a competition to get in there. But once you get in there, you are... I, there's no guarantee, but the chances of being successful and finding investors has significantly improved. Uh, and that shows in, in the survival rate that we have uh, from 2016. Uh, and of course, as you go to later years, uh, 2021, the numbers are at 100% because they are very, very young. But if you look at the earlier years, 2016, 17, uh, and 18, then you we have still almost 80% of the startups that have been in the final round of the Atmacom in 2016 are active in this field and quite a number of them is successful in terms of their business model. That means there are not really startups anymore. They have uh, more than 10 employees. Some of them have more than 50 or 60 employees by now. So they have left the startup arena, I would say. Uh, Success is measured uh, in, in investors or in investment money very often, and that's that's for a good reason. Uh, you find here a number of uh, companies that have been through this uh, Atmacom programs over the year, and uh, on the right side, the amount of investment they received. Um, you will notice that uh, most of the investments are in the million euro range, uh, topping 15 million. So they are, they are the typical startups Enum is supporting 
uh, and is looking for uh, innovative ideas which are in the SME field uh, and the investments are typically from one to 15 million. We had one with 30 million, but that's already exception. So it's not, we are not the typical startup uh, ecosystem which attracts uh, unicorns, but we are the ecosystem that attracts the SME companies that have a strong deep tech uh, approach. And that would be my part. And I am very, very happy to see you once in the future on, in Berlin. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, here's the, my address, also the website of, of Enam, and feel free to contact me now or any time later. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Ferdinand. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a QR code here and uh, in the Zoom. Uh, let's check if we have uh, any questions. Uh, just to remind you, we can you can slide the QR code and uh, send questions immediately, and we will see them on the screen. So, we have a first question, Ferdinand. Any advice for Japanese startups who are still starting to enter global Europe market? <coughs> Well, if, my advice, I, I mean, find partners. Uh, coming, to, coming to Europe culturally, language-wise, for a Japanese startup, just uh, cold uh, is probably not a good advice. Uh, we have Japanese startups in the Enum network, uh, commercialization reactor Enum, and some others are networks which are welcoming and, 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 and very good in supporting Japanese startups. Get in contact with these accelerator programs first. Uh, use the networks to get into contact with uh, um, uh, with European strategic investors or potential strategic partners, and you very very often find that the network goes actually from I mean a Japanese startup comes to Enam, and we link them up with Japanese companies who are already very very active and have a widespread network within Europe, and 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 that part is makes it much, much easier for startups to succeed in Europe than if you try to open an office here quite cold and uh, and don't have an infrastructure and don't have a network yet. Thank you. We have the next one. How does Enam help startups when it comes to the Wally of Death? Well, in, in, in several ways. I mean, basically, there are two valleys of death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one comes uh, very often relatively early when the first uh, founding phase is over and you realize that your product isn't ready for the market yet and you have to spend another year or two in, in, in development to make it market ready. So kind of the first level of disappointment. Uh, Enam has its own program here where we receive actually government funding for where we can actually finance these startups or these people. Uh, to have access to laboratories, to have access to scientific expertise and spending another year uh, financed uh, in, in a relatively safety to get through this phase. Uh, and the second phase is uh, the moment when it uh, comes to, yeah, the product is ready, but it hasn't found its customers, customers yet. Um, that's where the cornerstone of what Atmacom is doing. Uh, we are bringing you into contact with the strategic partners, being it investors. We are our foremost an accelerator. And that means we are trying together with you to get you through this, this death valley. Um, you have to go through it. What we, we, we try to get you through it as fast as possible by giving you the contact, giving you also the chances to internationalize your business. Uh, if you come from Ilona, you mentioned that. If you come from Latvia, your market is small. Internationalization has to take place from day one. Uh, and honestly, in many ways, Germany isn't that much bigger. Uh, for many, many business models, internationalization has to take place on day two, if you are in Germany, maybe not day one. Thank you. Uh, first steps to interact is send me a mail. I will bring you in contact with a, with a team of Enam. They will help you further on. So you feel free to contact me and I will uh, forward the information to the Enam team and they will definitely contact you back. Great, great. I still see we have uh, questions coming in, but we need to continue. Uh, in the end of this session, we will have a poll for everyone interested to get more information about the presenters and to see the answers to all of the questions that are coming in. So 
till the end of the session, wait please, and just it will be another uh, code to scan uh, to actually leave your contacts so that you can receive a report after the event. And we continue. Thank you very much, uh, Ferdinand, for great presentations and for great Thank insights you. into Inam. Thank you. Well, now we are starting the pitching session for Latvian startups, and uh, the rules are as follows. Uh, each of the startup will have three minutes for pitch and two minutes for Q&A session. And everyone, both in Zoom and here in the audience, have an opportunity to send over questions, like I mentioned earlier, scanning this QR code. Um, and um, I would like to introduce the first startup, who is Zadio Nana a novel approach in developing high-quality nanosilicon and low-layer graphene. Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to our uh, partners and starting from Japan. Uh, my name is Tom Slapiums, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Adia Nana, and uh, our company is producing nanomaterials to enhance the capacity of lithium-ion batteries. So according to uh, global environmental tendencies, the EU is strongly pushing the industries to go green. Everybody understood that the climate change is here and it's mainly caused by CO2 emissions. The uh, transport sector is responsible for 26% out of all greenhouse gas emissions and inside it, 77% are generated by road transport. This is why the automotive sector has shifted its focus to electronic vehicles, but still the sales are hindered by the perspective of the customers that the current range won't satisfy their needs. And also the current, material are, current materials are already used on their maximum capacity. And this can be mitigated if the total capacity and the lifespan of the batteries will be increased. Uh, our solution to this problem is to substitute a material which is called graphite, which is on the anode side of the lithium ion battery, with our own produced composition of nanosilicon and graphene. Silicon is a very promising material to replace graphene because its theoretical capacity is 12 times higher. And with our production method, we can evenly distribute the particles of silicon throughout the graphene layers and also precisely uh, tackle the size and shape of those particles. And uh, our production method has a single step production and a 100% yield of the target product. Uh, in simple words, uh, we have simulated how our material will perform in a standard electronic battery. And we can either reduce the weight of the battery by 35%, maintaining the initial charge range, or we can increase the range by 200 kilometers, maintaining the initial battery weight and also prolonging the battery life. <clears throat> uh, since our uh, recent investments, we have uh, relocated to Poland and uh, set up a laboratory with state-of-the-art equipment. Currently, we are preparing multiple batches of our material to test them according to the testing protocols that were issued by our clients. And until the end of the year, our goal is to have a material on the stage of the market readiness, uh, ready to scale up production method and establish patents on the production technology. Our core team is consisting of me as the CEO taking care of the all business related activities. Uh, Violeta Slobovska is the head of R&D taking care of the technical aspects of the production method and the advisor of our company from the Fraunhofer's uh, Silicon, uh, Institute of Silicon Technologies yeah, as the advisor of our company. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for the presentation. <laughs> and let's start with the questions. So, what kind of questions we do have in Slido? Sorry? How do ah. materials reach in extreme weather, cold and hot? Uh, till now, uh, the materials were tested only in the uh, lab, uh, not in the real life conditions. So this is uh, our next step of understanding uh, how the material will perform in real life conditions. And only then we will be able to, to answer this question. 
so next, what is your uh, core technology? The core technology is the production method. We are using uh, microwave synthesis uh, where we are uh, using gases to produce uh, nanosilicon, and then we are in one shot basically mixing the material together. Is there any competitors? Uh, yes, yes, of course, there are a few. So uh, silicon is a very popular material in the field of uh, lithium ion batteries, and uh, we are not alone, so we are aware of our competitors, but the uh, good thing that everybody understands that the coming demand will be so, so huge that uh, basically everyone will have their place and be also because the implementers of the technologies are very, very different starting from uh, consumer electronics, ending with uh, aerospace uh, electronic vehicles and so on. IP strategy. Uh, I, I, IP strategy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, uh, as I already said, uh, uh, now we are uh, preparing the uh, patent application, which uh, will be uh, launched in nearest four or six Thank weeks. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have uh, questions you. coming in. It was a great presentation. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you so Thank much. You. you will be able to answer other questions after the session. And we continue, and um, I'd like to uh, give the floor to the next startup, uh, which is uh, extremely strong, produces additive materials based on modified carbon nanotubes for 3D printing materials. And the floor is yours. Three minutes. Hello, my name is Maria. I'm CEO and co-founder of the company 3D Strong. We developed additives which will Load to print, uh, sorry, uh, uh, we developed additives which uh, increase the mechanical strength and durability of 3D printed materials. Nowadays, 3D printing industry almost are used for prototyping because existing material has low mechanical strength and durability. We have developed additives which will allow to print real things for real use. We already proved our materials with industrial partners. We did independent test results. This test proved that adding just 10 milligrams of our additive to the one liters of liquid polymers, we increase in mechanical strength and durability of the end product three times. Our additive can be used not only for free deprinted materials, but also for polymer, plastics, metals, and many others. Also, our materials can be used in such industries as aerospace, healthcare, automotive, and many others. Our technology protected with know-how, and we already registered two patents. We have a very strong team. Our R&D team has experienced more than 25 years in nanotechnology field and material science. Me and my partners, um, Yanis, we respond for the business part of the company, and we have experience uh, at about 25 years in business development um, and in the 3D printing industry. Uh, in 2020, 3D Strong was named among of top five of carbon nanotube startup impact and engineering. Uh, our original business model was to sell our additive to the 3D printing materials and chemical producers. But this business model did not work uh, because uh, end use of material producers and industrial customers today buying pre-compounded materials instead of developing or mixing their own compounds. We decided to change our business model uh, to create our own uh, compounds, our own materials, which we can to sell to the end users, to sell to the material producers and industrial customers. Uh, we developed high-strength compounds uh, with carbon nanotubes from the most common uh, uh, recycled polymers. Uh, that we can to sold in granulated filaments and powder forms. Uh, with 3D printing, many high-value products can be made from our materials, such as formworks, piping components, renewable energy, mechanicals, and many others. Our business model is um, to sell our carbon nanotubes reinforcing materials to the material distributors, 3D printing manufacturing, and industrial customers. At the moment, we are looking for investments. We are looking for 500,000 euro to establish uh, small-scale commercial pilot production on the site. Thank you for your attention. Let's explore the future of the sustainable manufacturing. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. And let's start with the questions. So let's see what kind of questions we have coming in. So how does the material differ from other materials used in 3D printing? And what is the added value? Yeah, uh, our uh, materials is based on carbon nanotubes. It's the part of uh, another materials. We can edit uh, our carbon nanotubes to the polymer, uh, the plastics, metals, uh, and um, our materials um, increase in mechanical strength and durability of the end products of the materials. Like, uh, as I told, uh, a test already showed that adding just 10 milligrams for one liters of existing liquid polymers, we increase in mechanical strength and durability of the end products three times. Okay. Uh, what do you expect from Japanese partners? Uh, we looking for the partners. Uh, we wanted um, uh, to, f uh, like we know, like in Japan is a growing market. Uh, we are looking for applications. We want co uh, incorporate uh, these uh, industrial partners um, to help to them to improve uh, the mechanical properties or other properties of the materials. Also, like carbon and tubes, they can provide not just for mechanical properties, but also thermal, electroconductivity, and many other features. And like uh, our ND team, working more than 25 years in the technology field, and there are uh, no carbon and tubes uh, from other sides. Uh, in terms of sustainability, uh, is your material uh, biodegradable or it needs to be recycled? Uh, carbon and tubes still under rich research. But uh, if to talk regarding uh, recycled, uh, they will not be recyclable. But, uh, for example, to the materials, they like small percentage is going in. And, but I think in future, uh, it will be technology how to recycle them also. Great, yeah. great. Uh, I like also, like, um, I assume and I know that like, in the next uh, 10 years, carbon and tubes will be future of the technologies. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes, and we continue. And uh, the next startup is uh, Canalum Biotech. Canalum is developing a rapid microbiological diagnostic test for food and drink industry companies. Canalum, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. <coughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Anton Adamovich, and I'm CEO and founder of Canalum Biotech. We have developed the world's fastest quantitative microbiological diagnostic system. What it really means is that the total time that you need to get to result in your microbiological sample is less than two hours, without any need of cultivation. And the situation is that for the past 140 years, we still need cultivation methods, petri plates, for uh, usual analysis, for conventional, conventional testing. It takes roughly two to five days, and this is basically technically just waiting for the cells to grow there. So, and it's more than one billion tests performed per year, which is a huge amount. And this results in long waiting time, and it is associated with numerous problems and recalls of products in almost any industry. So two to five days until you get the result, you already having a problem. And it also results in roughly 0.4 million deaths per year due to food poisoning and food, uh, regarding food. So, but the all information is already there in this a sample when you take it. It's not necessarily to put in, in a Petri dish if you could just dive in and find this needle in a haystack as a microorganism. So, and this is what we do. We have a three-step system, a test, a robotic microscope, which digitalizes the sample, and then the AI, which analyzes and understands and sees what is happening there. So why nobody has done it before? And th there is a very important reason, because of the complexity and the ability of technologies and enabling technologies. So the problem that we're actually solving is like finding one seed of sunflower in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. But not one Olympic-sized swimming pool, but actually 43, a volume of 43 Olympic swimming pools. So it's quite a pre precise instrument you need to have and industry-friendly at the same time. And this is what we do. We, ver we merge very distinct competencies as optorobotics, AI, high-precision mechanics, molecular biochemistry to do this all together. So in essence, it's like a mega image, like a Google Earth for germs. Without us, two to five days. With us, it's less than two hours because of the technologies and the combination of such. This is possible due to having 
amazing team of very diverse specialists in various uh, fields, in microbiology, in AI, and also advisors from around the world in optics. Uh, testing takes roughly 60 minutes, and it can be done by a person, and then the microscope sees all the stuff, which with our current microscope, it takes like one hour. So gathering one terabyte of image data allows us to uh, pilot with uh, Fortune 500 companies, and this is what we are planning to do to uh, bring it further to the market. Having the certification uh, not yet in place, but viable solution, we see that we're going to outcompete all the rest of the tests with our unique system. Thank we're you. looking for investors and industrial partners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for an excellent presentation. Let's see what kind of questions we have. What are the target customers for now? Any other potential segment in the future? Yes. Thank you very much for the question. The uh, current segments are food industry, chemical industry, because of the tendencies of using less biocides, therefore increased requirements for uh, microbiological diagnostics. <clears throat> That's the answer. OK. Yeah. What, what are the target customer segments for now and any other potential segment in the future? Oh, sorry, that was the, the question I was answering. What are the target customer segments now? Food and... Okay. Yeah, the, uh, what yeah. are the competitive advantages About, over yeah, the okay. companies yeah. that have other stuff? So, uh, to our research, and we do check every week, there is nobody that can do this at such an industry-friendly level. So, there are plenty of different tests. Uh, PCR tests, qPCR tests, but they're not that easy to implement in food industry and others. In fact, we've talked with our customers across the globe that are trying to use other methods, but they can't. That's why they're using Petri plates uh, for quantitative microbiological diagnostics. There's plenty of competition, and we don't compete with qualitative, so yes or no tests, but the quantitative is where we are best at. Will so it be applicable in the Japanese market? Oh, I think the short answer is yes. The longer answer is yes, of course. <laughs> and uh, because there's food industry, there's so many industries, so many productions in, in Japan, that's no doubt. What's your TRL? The current TRL is roughly six. So it depends on the application. Uh, in some, we are higher. In some, we are lower. We now need to develop the high-throughput system uh, to make it really industry-friendly, friendly, because now it works in the lab. It shows the concept, all this stuff. And yeah, it proves the due, during the due diligence process of our industrial partners that this is a feasible solution to look deeper into. Thank you. Thank you. You'll answer the rest of the questions afterwards. Thank you. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Yes, and we continue. Um, the next one pitching is a company named Elogium. So, Elogium is developing probiotic solutions for broiler producers. The floor is yours. Good luck. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, I'm Carlos from Elogium, where we use bacteria to make our lives better. We all had diarrhea. It is not a pleasant experience. And each year, 500 million people feel the same when falling ill with foodborne diseases. The number one cause for this is Campylobacter, which is most often transferred to us by eating chicken. But diarrhea is not the only thing Campylobacter does. Fever, nausea, neurological diseases. Thankfully, the EU has decided to stop it. In 2025, it will lower the allowed level of Campylobacter presence in chickens by 30%. Chicken broiler producers are aware that food safety is their burden now. And that is precisely why we at Elogium, by using our patent-pending unique bacteria, are developing a probiotic chicken feed additive that eliminates Campylobacter directly inside the chicken gut system completely. Even more, by improving the microbiota, the feed conversion improves. More meat by using the same amount of feed. But chicken broiler producers are the end users of our product, not our customers. To save the pain of large capital expenditure, we will partner with a well-established animal health company for production, branding, marketing, distribution, and sales of our product. And our partners are a source of revenue 
recurring license payments based on the amounts of our products sold. We are already in negotiations with two of the top five global animal health companies for co-developing our product. So what are the others doing? The existing safeguarding practices, such as biosecurity at farms and washing of chickens at slaughterhouses, have reached their limits. The only existing probiotic, which claims to be effective against Campylobacter, Calspirin, has to be fed at a larger dosage, thus making it relatively more expensive. Other novel solutions are being researched, such as bacteriophages and vaccines. However, all of the publicly available trials present only partial effectiveness at best. Can we deliver? Yes. Katerina, our pathogen expert. Polonta, our good bacteria expert. Professor Ines, our scientific manager. And me, the CEO and business developer of Elogium. With the help of our recently raised 550,000 euro pre-seed round, we will make our product ready for the authorization in the EU market, followed by global expansion into poultry and other animals, finally entering the human probiotics market in 2035. We're currently looking for an industrial partner to enter the Asian market. Lovely chickens, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos, for an excellent presentation. Let's see what we have as questions coming in. Are traces of the chicken food additives safe for human? Uh, we now know that they are. It's not yet certified that they are, but we know they are. All the tests have been done. They just need to be approved. What do chickens say about the product? Well, I can show you a video how they eat it, so I guess they like it. <laughs> What's your TRL? Our TRL is now four. Any effect on ag meat quality product? Uh, the product is made for the meat chickens, so we don't know anything about the eggs. Uh, the meat quality it will be uh, discovered right now in end of May, so I cannot re reply this yet. Any potential use case other than broiler? Any R&D roadmap plan for the second segment as well? Yes. So the broilers is the first uh, segment with this bacteria. However, Campylobacter is, pro is a problem also in uh, piglets and in puppies. So the next uh, expansion for this strain is meant to be in the, in the pigs and followed by the puppies. But in terms of timeline, how much time would it take? This roadmap for ah, yeah. piglets and so, uh, so for the piglets, we plan to enter the market in 2032 and for, for the puppies as well. But this is still, we first want to do the first product in the poultry uh, to be able to acquire revenue as fast as possible. How much money do you need? Oh, well, it depends for what. For, uh, for uh, certification of our product, we're sort of set. Uh, for, uh, for the seed round, we have 2 million seed round coming up in 18 months. Yeah, like this. Thank you. And uh, what's your expectations on Japanese companies very quickly? Uh, we want to have a company which has fermentation facilities, which has an established distribution network, and which can help us enter the Asian market. Great. Thank you. I hope you, you will get it. Thank you. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, finished the first session of pitches uh, of the Latvian startups. I hope you enjoyed it. And we are actually turning our eyes uh, to Japan now. And uh, now is the time for our second uh, keynote uh, session from uh, a Japanese representative. And uh, I would be honored to represent uh, Masahira Morizumi-san from Asahi Kasei, an innovation manager. Masahira Morizumi is creating new business and leading innovation in Asahi Kasei. Morizumi-san, please, the virtual mic is yours. Oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, first, I would like to share my screen. So, um, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. all yes. good. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting uh, such an event. Uh, it's an honor to be a presenter. Um, my name is Masa Morizumi. Uh, I'm leading uh, new business development and also innovation in Asahi Kasei Corporation. And today, um, I would like to start from who we are, and the second, uh, overviewing about our corporate venture capital. And last, uh, I would like to share about uh, unique business unit activities. 
So um, our company, Asahikase, uh, we are a Japanese chemical company uh, founded in 1922. And our headquarters is in Tokyo, Japan. And we have over 46,000 employees globally. And this is our uh, group mission. Uh, group mission is creating for tomorrow. And group vision, uh, we Asahikase group uh, contribute to life and living for people around the world. And our group value is providing new value to society by enabling living uh, in health and comfort and harmony with the natural environment. And this is our business. Uh, we have three big business fields. Uh, one is materials, second is housing, and third is healthcare. And 50% of our uh, business is related to materials such as chemicals, uh, fibers and textiles, uh, electronic materials and devices, sensors. And one third of business, we have housing. We sell complete houses and also construction materials. And around 17%, uh, we have healthcare business such as acute critical care and also pharmaceuticals. And I belong to uh, this material sector. Uh, and especially I am interested in uh, automotive applications. And this is our global network. Uh, we have um, manufacturing and sales, R&D sites over 20 countries uh, all over the world. So that's all um, about our company. And now I would like to move on to uh, overviewing our global venture capital. Um, our CBC uh, started from 2008 in uh, Menlo Park, uh, which is located in California, Silicon Valley. And we expand our office to Boston, uh, Dusseldorf and Shanghai. And this month we now open a new office in Tokyo. Uh, we have a 95 million uh, uh, US dollar budget for three years from 2022 to 2024. Our CBC mission is to create a new business with startups and focus areas uh, for materials are sustainability, new materials, food, um, agriculture, IoT, mobility, and battery. For healthcare, uh, medical devices, biopharmaceuticals, and digital health. For homes, uh, construction, and real estate is our scope. Um, this is our portfolio of our investment. So far, we have invested um, 50 startups and 38 um, startups are active in our portfolio. Uh, we have acquired two startups from our investment. Uh, one startup is called Crystal IS, located in the US, uh, developing UV LED. And second startup is called Sensair, uh, based in uh, Sweden and they are developing uh, gas sensors. Um, this is the same portfolio uh, mapping more uh, from the global map. So you can see um, our investment is have no border. So we are always welcome uh, uh, several start startups all over the world. And now also I would like to announce we have opened a new uh, fund uh, from this April. Uh, this is a separate fund from a uh, budget which I explained from a previous slide. Uh, this fund is uh, really focused on carbon neutrality such as hydrogen, energy storage, um, carbon management and bio-based chemical and so on. Um, this fund's budget is of uh, 100 million US dollar for next five years. So if you are seeking a next fundraising related to this area, please contact us. So uh, last, I would like to share a, a unique uh, activity from business unit. Uh, we have done uh, several concept car project called AXI. Um, and AXI project, we have collaborated with several startups. Um, name Axi comes from uh, Asahikase and U. Um, U stands for um, customers and partners. And this project activities uh, objectives are uh, support uh, expansion of automotive uh, business. Second is trusting a connection with customers and partners and also enhancing uh, our company's presence. 
Um, this is the first uh, project uh, you can see in the left. Uh, we released in 2017. Uh, we showcased over uh, 30 uh, products and technologies related to a uh, case in automotive, such as uh, raw materials for tires or painting and coating, and also um, fabrics and polymer technologies for exterior interior parts, and also electric system and sensors for a passenger experience. Uh, we collaborate with uh, this project uh, with a startup called GLM, which you see in the light. Uh, GLM is a startup in Japan. Uh, they are developing an EV type, a sports type EV. So uh, we collaborate with GLM designers for a whole concept design of this uh, car, uh, vehicle. And also we adopt um, powertrain and battery system of GLM in this concept car. And this is the second car um, concept car we released uh, last year. Um, and we installed uh, 17 products and technologies, including two startup technologies, um, increasing the value of mobility uh, relating to sustainability, satisfaction in society. Uh, one of the startups we collaborate is called Lumia. You see in the uh, right top, um, Lumia is based in US and developing flexible heating textile. And you see in the middle, Sage, this is our group company. Uh, we acquired it to, in 2017, which uh, producing car seat fabric. So we combine uh, Sage and Lumia's technology together and develop a high design heating seat, seat in this concept car. And the second con uh, startup is uh, Ultrasense. Uh, they are also based in US and they develop a touch sensor. And this Ultrasense is our CBC portfolio. Uh, we installed Ultrasense technology to control door and canopy of this uh, concept car. So all of these concept car, uh, we uh, used, uh, we bring it to a global exhibition such as CES for uh, promoting and marketing. So I would like to show you a short video of uh, Axie 2. So, um, so we have a lot of touch point uh, with collaborate with startups such as uh, corporate venture capital investment and also R&D or mass production, sales, marketing, or we have a lot of experts in broad technologies. So if you are interested in our company, uh, please feel uh, free to contact us. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Morizumi-san. And uh, let's see if we have any questions coming in. But before the questions, I'd like to ask you, you haven't have any, had any investments in Latvia, haven't you? Oh, yeah, we have never invested before. But I'm really, really excited for your, your technologies. Yeah. Great, great. OK, uh, please share some difficulties when collaborating with Europe, overseas startups, and how Asaki Hase overcome these difficulties. Oh, yes. Um, sometimes it's really uh, difficult for like uh, locations difference. So mainly our uh, technology is based in U uh, Japan. So sometimes there are a lot of uh, shipment delays or that, something that, like that will be might be a challenge. But also we have a lot of facilities in Europe. So 
it depends on what the technology is, but some, uh, if we can collaborate with in our U, uh, Europe facilities, that will be really efficient for us. Great. So what stage of the company are you usually investing in? Thank you. Uh, it depends on the market and industries, but usually we prefer a uh, seed and series A round. Seed and series A. Okay. So the next yeah. question would be, uh, what are specific things that you are looking at uh, at startups uh, at the seed stage, for instance? Yeah, for the seed stage, uh, we look uh, more for a synergy with our R&D or basic technologies. Yeah. Have you faced any cultural differences that turn out to be obstacles for cooperation with Europe? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so far we don't any feel about any difference between other uh, regions. Okay. In terms of <clears throat> on the structure of your organization, uh, is CVC an independent uh, standalone entity or kind of a department within a company? Oh, yeah. Um, our CVC is uh, independent, so they have own budget and own uh, internal process. Okay. Um, you showed us a beautiful car. When it will be sold on the market? <laughs> well, yeah, unfortunately, that is only like a one-off car. So, But in the long-term future, maybe hopefully we can sell that. <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for your presentations, for the answers, for the questions. Arigatou gozaimasu and matane. And we continue. Uh, let me remind you the rules. There will be four startups pitching uh, from Japan. They will be pitching online. Uh, but the same rules apply. Three minutes for the pitch and two minutes for the question. And uh, I would like to pass the virtual mic to uh, 3DC. Uh, it's a new carbon material, graphene mesoponge, that accelerates the evolution of batteries. The questions uh, won't be answered today. These questions particularly will be an answered afterwards, but please do send them if you have. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are 3DC Inc. And we established last year a span off from Tohoku University in Japan. And our business is producing the, these cutting edge materials, uh, carbon materials called uh, graphene meso sponge. And our mission is to revolutionize the battery industry with cutting edge these carbon materials for a sustainable future. And our business is uh, uh, a business mark, uh, uh, the Main target market is uh, battery cells and use the as a conductive assistant material in the electrodes. And the, the big issue of the battery industry is a lifespan of the battery uh, because uh, uh, the use case is uh, getting longer and longer. For so the for the use case of the energy storage for energy uh, infrastructure, uh, the big issue is a service life uh, compared to uh, the power generation and other uh, transport and storage method uh, is around 50 years uh, for service life, but the battery life cycle is uh, limited around 10 years. And uh, uh, very legendary uh, battery researchers recognize that long life is a very crucial and important problem. And uh, but but the battery lifespan is a very difficult problem because uh, to to uh, keep over 3,000 3, uh, times cycle, we need to each, uh, reach the efficiency to up to uh, over 99.99%. But the, our carbon can uh, prevent the degradation of physically and chemically uh, because uh, our carbon is the first material that can change the volume flexibly uh, and uh, repeatably. And the other thing is the chemical durability. Our carbon is a quite uh, uh, higher, higher chemical durability compared to other uh, carbon materials, even if the case of carbon nanotubes. And uh, this is our team. Uh, he's the inventor of this material, and he's a professor of Tohoku University. And the uh, other team is an uh, application, and he is uh, uh, one of the 
founding member of the Sony lithium ion battery. And uh, the Sony is the first commercialized company for the lithium ion battery. And uh, mass production team is also highly expected mem uh, experienced members for the factory startup and plant manager and head, head of R&D and so on. Uh, battery change the world and we change the batteries. Thank you. Thank you so much, 3DC. So send your questions and they will be after the session answered for sure. And we move on. And I would like to uh, give the virtual mic to the next, next startup, which is the Microwave Chemical. They have developed plastic chemical recycling technologies, such as uh, microwave assisted thermal decomposition and depolymerization. So, Microwave Chemical, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Please Just start. A moment. I'm, yep. Can you see my slides? Not yet. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I am going to ask uh, simple questions. How do we achieve zero emission? And how do we achieve electrification? Many countries say uh, electr electrification is necessary to achieve carbon neutrality. Indeed, electrification has been achieved in the mobility sector, where EV is replacing gasoline powered vehicle which, uh, with remarkable speed. However, the industry sector still uses fossil fuels almost all for production. That's simply because uh, there is no solution for electrification so far. And we can give the solution. That is microwave. Our company, Microwave Chemical, is a deep tech startup spinning out of Oscar University. Microwave is well known for microwave oven. The history is longer than a half century, but it seemed difficult to scaling up to the industrial plant. Then we succeeded the world's first chemical, chem, uh, world's first commercial chemical plant using microwave in 2014. So what is microwave? That is electromagnetic wave that enables that enables to transfer energy only to the target material directly, selectively, and rapidly. That's why shorter processing time, less energy consumption, and smaller size of reactor are realized by using microwave. In what kind of industry processes is microwave applicable? We have applied microwave technology to almost all chemical processes and applications. Especially, uh, we have focused on plastic chemical recycling. We have been developed a proprietary technology platform of microwave-based chemical recycling, and we call it PlowWave. Combining renewable energy with PlowWave, energy con consumption can be reduced by 40%, and CO2 emission can be reduced by 90% compared to conventional heating method. It enables circular economy with significantly less CO2 emissions. We have already started demonstration uh, using our plant, our plant facility, our, our pilot facility with the capacity of one ton per day. And for example, uh, and we have uh, started, we have, we have been advancing uh, a lot of uh, joint development with major chemical companies such as Mitsubishi Chemical. This is one example for the composition of acrylic, acrylic resin. Uh, we are now in pilot phase and we are going to com be commercialized, commercialization uh, next year. Thank you. Your time is Thank up. Thank you. Now is the time for questions. Let's see what kind of questions have we received. Uh, what are safety implications for using microwave for industry applications? Yeah, the safety is very important uh, to control, uh, to, to be commercialized at the microwave. So we have been uh, established uh, safety, uh, safety system 
uh, to operate safely uh, for the commercialized plant. So yeah, we have already uh, uh, established the safety implications that such as uh, interlock. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is, is there any regulation uh, restriction when you go to the EU market? Um, no, really. Of course, there is a uh, regulation, but uh, I think uh, uh, a Japanese restriction is the uh, most strict in the world. So uh, we can uh, we can clear uh, the restri restriction in the U EU as long as we uh, clear the Japanese Japanese uh, restriction. Okay. <clears throat> How do you differentiate other cutting edge recycling technology like enzyme recycling? Uh, sorry, I don't know the en enzyme uh, recycling, but uh, our our uh, our key tech, uh, our main advantage is can we can use the electricity and the microwave can heat directly and selectively to the target materials, so we don't have to uh, heat uh, other. Uh, non-target materials, so it can save them a lot of energies, and uh, it's more uh, effective uh, heating method. Okay. Uh, TR yeah. Thank you. And uh, what's your TRL? Uh, TRL. Uh, it depends on the plastic, but the uh, uh, so, so example of PMMA, it's uh, level seven. Okay. What do you expect from EU market and what kind of players are you looking for in particular? Uh, we, are going to, uh, we, want, uh, we are going to expand the business to, e to the EU market and uh, we are looking for the partner uh, to expand the business in the EU uh, in, the, uh, in the field of chemical recycling. Thank you. So Thank you. Any partner. So, yep. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. Your great presentation. And we continue. So I'd like to introduce the next startup, which is uh, Mebiol, developed film with nanoside holes that allow only the water and, <clears throat> sorry, the nutrients necessary for crop growth to pass through. So Mebiol, are you ready? Yes. The floor is yours. Uh, I would like... Uh, 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 very briefly, uh, our uh, technology, uh, farming technology. Uh, can you see this this field? Okay. Oh, this film uh, plays a uh, uh, role of the soil and soil and water. Okay. Uh, this film. This film uh, put on the uh, culture media, and uh, uh, we put uh, lettuce seed on the film. Or let us uh, germinate spontaneously, germinate and grow like this. So can you see that the huge amount of fine roots strongly adhere onto the surface of the film? This is the film for tomato. The tomato also grow on, on the film. Can you see huge amount of fine roots adhere on the film? So we can harvest a very sweet nutrient uh, tomato. Except tomato, we can grow on this film Cucumber, uh, paprika, strawberry, various kind of the vegetable we can grow. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is a uh, domestic uh, IMEX tomato farms that got the, uh, the profit balance of IMEX tomato business. Uh, annual compared to hydroponics, yeah, annual yield, uh, one third of hydroponics, but wholesale price, uh, I make tomato 2.5 times higher than uh, 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 hydroponics. So sales is not so uh, uh, different, uh, but initial cost, cost I make is much, much uh, low, uh, cheaper. Uh, than the uh, 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 hydroponics. 
And lining costs are also cheaper than so that the gross margin six times higher than uh, hydroponics. Right now, uh, number of IMEC farms are 160. Uh, production of bay seed tomato for uh, 4,500 uh, 4, tons per year. A wholesale market of tomato, $60 million. OK, uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, gross uh, profile uh, domestic IMEC farms. Very smoothly increased, but si recently, uh, saturation. This saturation comes from our company is, is small, and so that the uh, uh, members number is just uh, uh, seven, eight. So that is the reason. So next slide, please. Uh, the, uh, the current uh, farming uh, based market uh, size of the uh, products, uh, which is a target of IMECAS tomato, $3 billion, cucumber, $3 billion, strawberry, $2.0 billion. Okay. Domestically, current uh, total area of greenhouse, uh, hydroponics, and drip soil culture are 2,000 hectare and 50,000 uh, hectare, respectively. So I make might replace might have replaced the hydroponics in near future, and then uh, soil culture in far future. Uh, then if it, so the near future market size of the uh, annual sale is uh, sixty-two point uh, a million dollars. And uh, a long. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Unfortunately, the time is up and uh, we are looking forward <laughs> for the questions. Yeah. So let's see what kind of questions we have. While we're waiting for the questions, what's our, what are your expectations from uh, EU market? But the drawback of a regular soil does the film soil. Okay. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So are you answering the question, what drawbacks of regular soil does the film solve? Okay. Uh, a soil property is uh, different from season to season. And the place to place. So, but uh, this is uh, uh, always uh, this uh, film property is constant. Okay. And so uh, uh, this is the thickness of the film is uh, uh, 100 uh, micrometer. Uh, in the, on the other hand, the uh, soil thickness, 30 centimeter or uh, 100 centimeter. So, this is easily, uh, we, can, we can carry uh, easily film uh, everywhere, but uh, soil is uh, difficult. Uh, in that sense, uh, 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 industrialization of farming, uh, this uh, film contributes industrial, uh, industrialization of a, a farming, I think so. Okay, and another quick question. Uh, you mentioned several types yeah. of vegetables. What kind of market would be the most promising in Latvia and Europe? Uh, tomato is the most promising. Uh, and the next is the strawberry, melon, cucumber. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you for your great technology. Yeah. Hopefully we will grow tomatoes with that in Latvia. We'll see. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> we are continuing. <laughs> I would like to introduce the next startup, which is PT Bio, uh, Genome Editing and Digital Technology for Bioeconomy Society. So PT Bio, are you ready? Yeah. Yes, can you my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Hello everyone, my name is Atsuhiro Ishii. I'm chief operating officer at PT Bio. 
PT Bio aims to design biological function in the bottom industries. Today, I'd like to talk about digital breeding with BioVX. Recently, due to climate change or global supply chain problems, um, <laughs> supply, chain pro supply chain problems, breeding with desired function is really important in sustainable food resources. For example, higher growth plants, more nutritious foods, this is resistant fisheries, and microbe or microalgae that produce chemicals efficiently. However, there's a big problem in breeding. Uh, it takes a long, really long time in cultivation and test farming. And moreover, breeding is kind of miracle product in nature, right? So you have to spend the time and money and efforts. Our digital breeding is very efficient because you can save a lot of time. At first, we pick up one of the client's species and extract the DNA to sequence genome and then assemble the sequence data in order to grasp the whole gene map. And then uh, you, you compare gene expression level of different species, uh, such as uh, bigger or smaller ones, then find out this kind of a characteristic gene. At last, you can screen all of the species by visualizing this characteristic gene in the same way. According, according to comparative landscape, PT Bio is different from other analysis contractors, in, especially in analysis accuracy and follow-up system, both of which are really important to find out your desired species. Why does PT Bio do that? Although, although the development of, of next generation sequencing has been accelerating recently, it is really difficult in analysis of sequence data. Our analysis workflow based on an advanced algorithm precisely make genome information and specify targeted gene. Also, it is very important to get high quality samples in the right way and also uh, conduct, conduct optimal analysis according to purpose. So our supportive consulting based on an abundant experience is critical. By use of our digital breeding to a lot of species, we hope to acquire a large market in the near future. And we have been access, successfully developing technologies and raising funds so far. And we are planning to raise funds this year to strengthen our analysis workflow and business development. Under Hitema Sabono, a top runner in bioinformatics, we are accelerating digital breeding. And also our CTO is a global top runner in genome editing. So you can choose the use of genome editing uh, uh, for the improvement of function after screening your species. And a business development team has an ex advanced experience in not only global strategy planning, but also intellectual property and project finance. So let's start joint start a joint research project with us, or uh, please consider investing. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Peter Bayer. And we are now up for the questions. Let's see what we have. Any effect on quality product? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the question. Yes, it is important to get high quality samples before uh, before analysis. So uh, it is important to discuss with us uh, on how to uh, how to extract the DNA or uh, how, how to choose uh, the analysis way. Is it proven that there is no harm for human? Uh, yes, uh, also it depends on the case. Um, so for, um, the, in the project uh, with the food or agricultural companies, uh, the tar target species is uh, fishery or uh, plant or animals. So in that case, uh, there is no uh, harm. There is no harm, yeah, it's not harm. Thank you. You mentioned lots of potential species, but which markets or species you are currently targeting now? Mm -hmm. and what about in the future? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the question. Well, uh, in terms of business, um, the, the fo focusing industry is one biomanufacturing industry uh, because the microbe or microalgae of the biomanufacturing bio industry is a tunnel, but them is very short. So we successfully aim to accomplish our aims very fast. Uh, at the same time, in the food industry, there's a big unmet need. So the food, food and biomanufacturing industry is very focusing on point. Thank you. So do you have any concrete roadmap for expansion into Europe? And what would be your expectations from corporations in Europe or maybe in Latvia? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, th thank you for your question. Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, collaborate with uh, global uh, players. Um, 
we so far we 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 have already started several projects with domestic uh, players. Uh, however, uh, there's a big market in the uh, in in the foreign country. So, uh, so yes, let's discuss uh, on how, how to proceed with the project. Thank you. Thank you so much, PT Bio. Thank you, and the round of applause. Yes. Thank you so much. And that was uh, the last presentations from uh, the Japanese startups. And uh, before we end the session, uh, I would like to, uh, you to be active and to uh, scan the QR code that you see here to actually fill in the poll. And uh, you will be able to leave your contact details if you need more information about the companies that you've seen today. Or let's say you have still questions and answers, so please uh, fill in the questionnaire. It takes only 10 seconds. Seconds. And uh, I would like to thank all of the keynote speakers today from Inam, from Masaki Kase, all of the presenters, uh, and also Plug and Play Japan and Commercialization Reactor for organizing this kind of sessions. And I do th hope that we will see some productive collaborations between startups and corporations in the future. And what, one more thing, we would like to take a photo of all of the uh, people who are present online, if we can have the gallery view, and if I can ask uh, those who are pitching today from the stage to come before the screen, if it's possible. Let's, let's check it. Hayata, if you can uh, put everyone on the screen and we can uh, share it on the screen and quickly take a photo. Yeah, sure. So maybe Aldashi, can you share your uh, gallery view? Sure. If that is possible, we'll see. <laughs> but we don't, we don't see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody just have to to uh, screenshot for for the online participants. Yeah. Oh, Ima does it. Thank you. Thank you. Morisan, can you turn on your camera for the group picture? Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, one, two, the three. The lower line, maybe we can just uh, split. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And let's have more of such sessions. Uh, and uh, have a very productive day today. Over to you, Artis. <laughs>